Well, 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 well. Good afternoon, West Ham fans. We have even more managers added to the David Moyes show. <laughs> Yes, everybody, Russ and the West End Network. Hope you're safe and well. Hope your Thursday is going well. We're almost, we're getting to the week. We are getting to the weekend. Slowly but surely, my friends, we are getting there. And uh, we finished the January transfer window and everyone assumed that uh, that's it, enough rumours. But now the rumours have changed for not on the pitch, but on the dugout. Um, yesterday, we spoke about uh, Paolo Fonseca in a bit more detail. Uh, reports, you know, that we'll be offered him as well as being offered Sebastian Gutierrez, for, former PSG manager, currently managing in the Qatarian League of all places. Um and we know there's a number of managers that the fans want as well. The likes of Ruben Amorim, Arnie Slot, people like that. But three more names have, have entered the fray, so to speak. Um, and uh, two, I don't want. <laughs> and one, I do want. Or one I'm more interested in. Um, so I'll do it a bit like a shit sandwich. So we'll have crap on. One I quite like, and then we'll finish on a what a crap one. Again, this is just my opinion, but um, these are people that we've been linked to in the uh, in the press in the last say 24, 48 hours. Um, Anthony did a show this morning about Mr. Sullivan. Um, yesterday we had uh, a few shows with uh, Budgie and, and Kieran had their show. They had their um, old school hammers talking about the um, Sky Report, Sky Sports Report, um, uh, Jamie Talks. Um, we talked about Tim Steinden. And actually, thinking back at more, more reflection, watching other people's uh, opinions, I agree with Nick at Claret and Booze. Nicholas, hell has frozen over. But I do. I, you know, I, I don't... I saw it originally as a come-get-me interview, but I don't... But then I thought, but then to be honest, to do that, firstly, I think it was part of the same interview that he had with Florin last week or the week before you know and so there was a continuation of that and i think it was piecemeal rather than a brand new interview but we don't know all we know is the the tweets that florence put in but i think it was more of a case of look i could go to liverpool mr sullivan and the same way that mr Moyes goes tim's not very good at tim struggling at transfers you know so that using the media to put pressure on uh various pieces of the puzzle that's 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 how I saw it. Now looking back at it, reflection, um, because he's only been there for a, a short amount of time. You know, as I said, he's he's building his team. He's his brothers there there now. He's got the he's got the head of digital, you know, the head of analytics and performance from Werder Bremen. Uh, one of his brother's recommendations, I believe. Um, they both worked at Werder Bremen at the same time in terms of his brother and uh, Maximilian. Uh, his name is so yeah so. I, I don't, of course you're going to be honoured. It's like any person is honoured to like be linked with the Liverpool job, for example. It just is. It's just the way of, you know, it is a bigger job than West Ham, unfortunately. But anyway, let's talk about this. And I thought, I think also that, that interview was like, you know, we're looking ahead to the future and yeah, we'll see what the future holds. Basically put me in charge of who's the new manager going to be. And I think whoever the new manager com- coming in is will give a clear indication to the fan base of who is pulling the football strings. We have, we, we you know, the the rhetoric, I'm not use now, Jim, well, the rhetoric is that Tim is the right-hand man. Tim does this. But we know that Sullivan has stepped in at times. And he maybe can't stop doing that so to speak um and so you know if if for example if it is a it's not but if it would be a Rafa Benitez a, a Jose Mourinho even a even a Palo Fonseca to some some extent you could assume that that was a Sullivan stamp approved um aside and if we get some of the guys we talk about in a minute uh well, actually some guys we don't talk about it as well we'll talk about it but maybe a younger manager more progressive maybe someone even who's currently in a contract that to me shows that he's Steinton because Sullivan never never buys managers out of contracts so that would be totally against what he usually does but anyway let's start let's start with the first layer the one I the one that we all thought was gonna happen uh, and be linked to Steve Cooper Steve Cooper, uh, according to a couple of reports, including 90 Minutes, there we go, the reliable source of 90 Minutes, it has 
um, well, declared that Steve Cooper uh, is uh, could be on the list of potential managers to take over from West Ham. I mean, Moyes hasn't even left his job. Moyes hasn't gone yet. Moyes might still stay. And there's a queue of about 20 people lined up behind him. Um, but apparently, according to the, the article, the 40, 40, how is he 44? I'm there, I'm younger than him. And I look older than him, granted. Um, um, and he's got more hair. Anyway, regardless of that. Um, so <laughs> whether we want a manager who... You know, did a great job in the championship. You know, he has a great bond with the players and the start and the and the fan base. He, you know, despite the fact they weren't performing, he was still very much had the had the various support of the of the fan base as well. Despite about all of that, despite the fact of a meddling sort of owner as well, buying players for him, maybe players he didn't want, maybe players he didn't need, and um, particularly obviously buying almost a whole, or over a whole new squad, didn't he, when they got promoted uh, for the Premier League into the Premier League, rather. Um, a manager who went on a run of 13 games without a win. I think it was a one in 13 uh, and finished and, and was sacked when his side was 17th in the league. Next level? Don't think so. Do not think so. Moving along, moving along. The one, the interesting one is this one. And this was reported in The Guardian. Um, the Ipswich Town Manager, uh, Kieran McKinnon. Now, some people go, what? Never heard of him or oh, what championship? Oh, you've got to think about the setup, uh, particularly by Leverkusen, you know, which, which we talk about Tim having him, he was involved in the process. He wasn't the main man, but he was involved in the process. So Leverkusen get pick up Xavi Alonso from relatively obscurity. I mean, it was, it was La Liga B, it was Serie A, it was a Real Sociedad B side, uh, with no first team experience, no A team experience, so to speak. Um, I ain't getting no playing for. Um, and so, and then gets plugged into the the, the by Leverkusen job. Now we've been linked. To, you know, I, I said for me, my preference would be someone like a Michael Carrick, because I think Michael Carrick has experience in the Premier League, albeit not great. He's not a long experience. He was caretaker manager. And we'll come back to McKit McKenna because he was working with Carrick at that time. Um. West Ham boy, so he's got that sort of old school Greenwood Lyle boot room type association with the club. Uh, he's an academy player as well, so he knows the academy at West Ham. He's he's he's, he's known what it can do, and plays a good style of football. And uh, he's in the game in terms of the English game as well. Probably not has much of an much of understanding outside of the English game, but that's where Tim Steinland comes in. That's his job. You know, Carrick's job would be, and then the next manager to come in is going to be as a first team coach, not as a manager. So it's about coaching the side he's given or he's working with him to produce all the squad. Now, Kieran is having an absolute storming time at Ipswich, playing with a very limited squad in terms of in terms of money. Um, but the style of football he's playing is beautiful, particularly for the championship, which is known to be a hoofy, you know, I, I mean, we, we know what it's like, having been there a few times in our history. Um, He's playing a really good style of football. A lot of youngsters coming through the side. Obviously, we've been linked with uh, Leif Davis, the left back, who's six foot something left back. You know, a bit like Dan Byrne, you know, big left back. But actually, he is a left back rather than a converted centre half. Um, he was coach under uh, Jose Mourinho and then was made promoted into first team coach at Man United when uh, McCar McCarrick, <laughs> when Carrick took over for that sort of. 12, 13, 14 game run in the Premier League. He was promoted to first team coach and was taking all the tra all the training sessions and stuff alongside Michael. So again, not going to be like a, oh my God, I can't believe we're going. But for the project, there's a lot of tick boxes. He's also, he's, he's, he's Northern Irish as well. We've got a lot of Northern Irish youngsters in the, in the 18s and 21s. The likes of Callum Marshall, Patrick Kelly, um, Sean Moore, Michael Forbes. So, you know, again, that could help progression as well, potentially, for them guys into the first team, maybe, eventually. I don't know. But the fact is, he's, he's, he's only 37. Um, in fact, if we signed him, Fabianski is older than him, um, but he's a Londoner as well. And uh, for me, that's this, it's, it's an exciting prospect because of the style of football, because he has, you know, a, a he's starting to build quite a pedigree behind him. Granted, not in the Premier League, which is an issue potentially. Uh, and, and people will say, oh, we should get 
Ruben Amorim, or we should get on his. Yeah, we could do. We could do. But for me, some of those some of those managers are fantastic managers, and they've set up their own system. Would it work with Tim's system? Would it? Will they work together as a unit? You know, it, that sort of director of football, first team coach unit is. It's they have to work in 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 synchronization. They have to work to, together. You know, they can't work poles apart. They can't think, oh, I want to do this bit, but actually the style of football we're doing is this bit. You go back and listen to the when we when we lost to Bristol City and, and Liam Manning, you know, the, the Bristol City have set up themselves. And I know it's a championship side, but in terms of the setup, they set up or same as Brighton. There's a system in place. They get a new manager in or new first team coaching to um continue that system. Uh, same as Brentford and people like that. So there's a continua- continuation there. I like I like I like the fact we're linked to him. Um, whether we get him is another thing. It's which are riding high. They're doing well in the in the championship. Could well be promoted. Um, that would mean he probably would stay with the club potentially. Um, but if he doesn't, then I think there'll be a, lo- a number of clubs after him. I think particularly sort of Premier League clubs because he's shown he's um, he's he's very good. He's a very good very good coach. And lastly, talking about Brighton, it was only a matter of time. Graham Potter. In the Telegraph, it lists Graham Potter as being added to the shortlist. Now, can't see Potter coming. Ah, oh, Potter, our new celebrity. I can't see Harry, I can't see Harry Potter. I can't see Harry Potter anyway. But I can't see Graham Potter coming. Part of the reason is when we were when we were linked to players managers before, um, before he got the Chelsea job, actually, I believe. They they mentioned Potter, and I think it was Sean said. The, the board didn't fancy him. Um, they thought his success was due to the Brighton supercomputer rather than him as a manager. And you can sort of understand that. You know, you, you, he's had, you know, looking at Brighton since he's left, they've become a better side and a more exciting style of football as well. Um, you know, I don't think you'll get that style of football with Potter that you that we really want or that the fan, ba- the fan base is asking for. Um and I don't think he's even a particularly safe pair of hands, the man from Solly Hull, to be honest. Um, he didn't do a great job at Chelsea when he was playing with managing more experienced players. Um, he works well with a squad which he can build himself. And so, you know, he'll come in. And, and actually, in a weird way, thinking about it now subjectively, obviously he will be, whoever the new first-team coach coming in, will be building a squad with Tim Steinden because with so many players out of contract, um, they will be built, but I just don't think Potter's the man for me, to be honest. Out of those three, McKenna's the man. I still want, I still, you know, Michael Carrick for me is is the one I would prefer. I think he ticks a lot of boxes. Yes, he hasn't got like he's not the ha- household name from a managerial perspective, but I just think there's a bit more pluses than minuses. Um, I mean, even Paolo Fonseca, yeah, fantastic, you know, resume. Once you take out the spell at Shakhtar Donetsk. It's okay. I mean, he's 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 got into top fives in in Serie A and in Liga, um, and in Premier Liga in Portugal, I think as well. He's got qualifications for Europe for all those sides as well. Um, maybe, maybe. I just, I just, I think the fact is he only hangs around for two to three years, and I think realistically, you want someone who could. Stay for longer. Whether they will do is another is another you know question in terms of the results and stuff. But in terms of longevity, you know, we this is the foundations now. The next appointment is the foundations of a new West Ham, in my opinion. You know, I think we've we've sort of been treading water for the last year, in all honesty. I'm liking it, as I said, to a, a travelator at a hotel at an airport and Everyone's trying to get past, and Moyes is just standing there with his suitcase blocking it all up. You know, he could he could actually get pick his suitcase up and join everyone, but at the moment it's not. And it, we need now from in the summer to make a definitive decision where we have to really, and then move forward, and then move forward. Whether that's with, with Davy Moyes or not, I'm not saying either way, but I'm just saying I think we, you know, it's clear that we've been treading water for a year. We've got a massive rebuild job coming in the summer, um, which will mould the squad and give uh, whoever the new first team coach is. And that's what it was. It was. I mean, regardless of what who signs the deal, whether it's Moyes or Potter or Carrick or Steele or 
Slot or, or Morim or Fonseca or the guy from uh, Union uh, Sangalese or the guy from RB Leipzig or or Schmidt from Benfica. He's doing a great job as well. He's German. Um, they will be going as, a, as almost a, as a first team coach rather than as a manager. Uh, while Tim Steinen's in charge, I do not see West Ham signing another manager as such. It will be a first team coach. So terms will be based around being a coach rather than necessarily being the overseeing overlord of the club. Um, that's quite an old way of working now. Um, and we're geared now towards not that way. So, yeah. Anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Who's? Give me one name in the comments below. Just one name of who you want. Just, I'm not doing a poll or anything, but I'm just fascinated to see because... I'm sure everyone's got their own, you know. Uh, I mean, there's James from from uh, James from the United States of America. He's he's a big fan of Amori. I'm a big fan of Amori, and I just don't think I sit with the Liverpool job. I don't think you know that's. It's almost like for me, it's almost a consolation prize who gets the West Ham job for some of them because you know you've got Alonso, Amori, you know those two. You think would probably be dog fighting it out for the Liverpool job, and then whoever doesn't get the Liverpool job may then come into the West Ham job. Do you know what I mean? Potentially, but even that's a bit of a stretch. I don't want to be second best. Anyway, let me know. Take care, stay safe, stay warm, stay humble. Keep the faith. Come on, you bloody irons. Oh!